Terry, good night. Right. Great. Excuse me. I'll get it right. Good evening, everyone. Um, and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Um, I'm Terry McQuarrie, and I'm your current treasurer tax collector. I'd like to tell you a little bit about how I found my way to Weaverville. Um, every love story is beautiful, but I think ours is my favorite. Um, my husband and I met because his aunt and my mom are best friends. When he brought me from Dallas to Weaverville for a visit, it won my heart, and we decided this was a place that we wanted to raise our children. Jeremy and I have two adult children and a teenage son, and we are current foster parents as well. We're grateful to have this close-knit community. I've served in this office for over 10 years now. My finance and banking experience spans 20 plus years. I have a bachelor's degree in accounting with an emphasis in business administration. I am a credentialed California County Senior Executive through CSAC. The credential I hold through CSAC is a two-year program that has a specific curriculum requirements designed for county officials and built on a foundation of leadership and policy competencies expected of effective county officials. This office has a competent, commendable record with 10 plus years of stability while weathering the worst recession since the 1920s. There were false, unwarranted statements that I'd like to make some, provide some clarifications on that were made or alluded to during this campaign. My team has integrity and takes pride in their reputations and all of the work that they do. We hold ourselves to a high standard. Any employee or volunteer who works in this, this office must be thoroughly vetted, fingerprinted, and cleared through the Department of Justice before being hired. The Department of Justice is being known for their above stellar skills in um, identifying criminals. All employees in this department have passed the Department of Justice uh, clearance processes and procedures. The district attorney has written a letter in support of these employees verifying that they have not been and are not under investigation for any embezzlement as alleged. References were made to topics that do not pertain to this office as well. I did, however, bring the audit and budget books with me that have been referenced so that you can see for yourself that there are no concerns or red flags as previously alluded pertaining to this department. For quick reference, I attacked them with post-it flags Specifically, the cash and investment portion of the county uh, comprehensive annual financial report can be found on pages 39 through 45. All of these documents can also be found online on the auditor's webpage as they are actually functions of the auditor's office. The auditor would be more than happy to discuss any topics related to her office. I believe the combination of my experience and education makes me the most competent candidate to represent our community as treasurer tax collector. Thank you. Woo! Also running for treasurer, tax collector, Diane Richardson. Hi, thank you for coming. Good to see you all. My name is Diane Richards. I'm from Hayport. I'm running for treasurer because I actually attempted several times to do a citizen's audit of this county. I was stymied by the county council. Um, the books were closed to me. When you look at the audits that we have, they call them independent audits, but they're the same company year after year after year. There are other um, areas in California, such as Bell City, that had the same thing. They came out sparkling clean and yet they were embezzling and they all went to prison. The red flags that I see are that we have negative cash balances in many of the accounts. And those are like bank, those are bank accounts, each particular department. They've been running on and on and on, like the grants department, uh, half a million dollars continues. Where did that half a million dollars go? At one, one year it was 1.5 million negative cash balance. And the, the internal auditors actually, external, sorry, external auditors actually said there's a problem. They said there's a problem with the internal controls. But they, they don't go into it in, in the audit that they give to the public. It's, they said there's a letter that was sent to the entities involved. Um, I have um, good resources, sources 
that there is somebody in the office that was accused of embezzlement. They weren't prosecuted, they just moved on. I, I think that, I think that uh, we should actually have polygraphs for the people that work there so to make sure that they're taking nothing. In, in addition, when I looked at the website, there were no reports, investment reports. They were a year and a half, two years, be, two years behind. And after I brought it up, it was then put up there. I believe we should have full transparency that you can go to the website and see what every account is, every dime, what the balance is there. In addition, when I, I filed my um, candidacy uh, statement, um, obviously they found out that I intended to keep the office open 9 to 5. They changed their hours from just a few hours a day, which has been like that for a long time, to now 9 to 4. So at least things have uh, begun to improve because I'm running because the hours now are longer. They put the reports up there. But I believe there should be more transparency. We should see really what the account balances are. Um, the cappers weren't even uh, put up there until I actually uh, breached that subject with the auditor. Um, I had a hard time getting it. The county council didn't want to give it to me. And the auditor, the prior auditor, Marilyn Horn, gave me her code so I could go in and look at it. And that's the, the real story, not the budget. So I hope that you'll give me a chance to figure out what's going on in this county. Thank you very much. office we have is Superintendent of Schools, uh, Sarah Superman. 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 Uh, do you want us to go up there or do you want us to sit here? And you can if you want, uh, whichever you feel more comfortable with. Might as well. And, and just to answer your question, I brought my little sign that I've been doing everywhere because I know not everybody knows how to pronounce my name, so it's Superman. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here, is just to give you a little bit more information about me and about what we do at the County Office of Ed, because not everybody understands that relationship with the schools. So my husband and I have lived in Burke Ranch since 2003. Prior to that, I lived in Orleans, California, in Humboldt County, um, where I raised my three kids. And I've been in education for about 32 years. Um, I began working in Trinity County in 2008 when I was the part-time superintendent at Burt Ranch School District. And at the same time, I was also working with some other small districts because small districts could only afford part-time people sometimes. So that's one of my passions to help those little districts out. Um, I've been at TCOE at the Trinity County Office of Ed since 2012, and I served last as deputy superintendent under Bettina Blackwell. She retired at the end of June last year, so the board, the County Board of Ed, appointed me as County Superintendent. Um, and in general, the, the, super, the County Superintendent's job is to serve, support, and provide leadership to all of our nine districts in this county, and to serve as a single point of contact for educational issues in the county as a whole. Um, some of the things that we do at the County Office of Ed is to provide student services. Um, we have different activities like the, the STEAM Expo you might have heard about. We've started to do a lot more um, STEM work in the schools. That stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Um, we are providing more advocacy at the state level so that they understand that there is life above Sacramento and that our issues in rural small counties with small school districts are very different than Riverside and LA. And they're starting to get that because we, we are advocating for our small districts down there. Um, we also do a lot of new administrator coaching. We know that, that sometimes getting education staff into our county is difficult. Sometimes we start with brand new people. So our office um, does training and support services to administrators new and you know current. Um, I always feel like it's our job to help them do their jobs better so they can help their schools and their kids. Um, we also provide services like nursing and dental and counseling services, psychologists, this is to all the schools. Um, we have one of our former nurses here. Um, we do teacher coaching, we have uh, curriculum reviews so that what they can adopt new curriculum. Um, we do also the homeless and foster youth services. Um, 
other activities that we do for students, student programs are things like the Spelling Bee, you might have heard of, the History Fair, Student Art Show that's happening right now, and the Native American program. Um, we also just started from, I don't know that it's, it's been a long time. Okay, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> supervisor meetings for over seven years. I've taken uh, a lot of training. I've all, and done a lot of volunteer in this training. Um, spent a lot of money and time doing it I've, uh, of my own. Um, I trained with the Election Integrity Project for uh, poll watching and I've done that since 2014. I was a member of the Collaborative for several years and I've recently gone back. Um, I'm also with the Trinity County State Jefferson Committee, if you guys are familiar with that movement. And I've spent thousands of hours researching and reading, going to meetings, uh, looking up law, code, educating myself. Um, I'm, one of the things that makes me especially unique as a supervisor candidate is that I have a background in wildlife and timber and fire and fisheries. And over 75% of Trent County's land is managed by the federal government. And that's a really important part of our whole community for our safety, for our economy, for all of that. And it just isn't, um, there's no utilization of it. There's no understanding of it. Um, there's been some trouble because of the past forest service uh, the supervisor we used to have wasn't easy to work with. But now we have new supervisors, we have a new uh, district ranger in Weaverville, we have other new district rangers, and that opens it up for Trinity County to work with our uh, federal partners in land management, and we can come out on top on that with safety and uh, protecting our communities from fire. Um, I've been to a coordination seminar, which I plan on using, if I would like to use if the Forest Service and BLM are cooperative in, in helping with uh, reducing fuels and such. And that, I'm sorry, I'm kind of getting off track. Coordination is part of NEPA, and NEPA is the environmental document the federal government set up for us to use. But we don't ever, it's all about environment, but no one takes into economy or culture, that, and that's required. No one takes that into account. And coordination brings the federal government to the table, and they have to work with you. Um, and that's something that this county is missing. Uh, we have a coordination and resolution on the books, but the county has never invoked coordination. And um, if the Forest Service and BLM doesn't want to cooperate and work with us, I would like to use that as a tool. Um, I would like to have us have more open meetings. Uh, the meetings we have now, it's very hard to figure out what's going on, even if you go to them. And I would like to restructure a lot of that so it's more open and the information is easily accessed by the people. Thank you. And uh, second candidate for supervisor of District 1, Keith Groves. Thanks everyone for coming tonight. Uh, I am your current incumbent supervisor. Uh, I've held a job now for over three years. Uh, right now I'm chairman of the board. And my history is I grew up here. I recognize most of you tonight. Uh, <coughs> grew up in the training center. Uh, I have a degree in fermentation science from Fresno State. Uh, ran several large companies down elsewhere in the county. I moved back with my lovely wife. Had to go outside the county, bring a wife home. <laughs> 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 
best asset. Uh, so about 20 years ago, we, we came back full time, and since then I've been involved in county government, school boards. So I've been on school boards, TUP board, uh, planning commissioner, uh, and actively then stepped up to be supervisor. Uh, why I'm running again? Um, I get that question a lot. Is that the vision that I had when I started this isn't complete yet? So when, when I started, I wanted to lay the bricks and the groundwork for Trinity to get moving back and forward. Uh, so a lot of work has been done. This Lewiston is probably the most happening town from from the infrastructure work, mainly because of the work that your local community service district has done. So fire department, sewers coming. Uh, cell tower, uh, we are still looking uh, pretty positively that we'll have digital uh, fiber right through town here in two years uh, up on the lake. We've got all, actually three boat ramps that are uh, ready to have funding to start uh, getting those fixed up in a much higher quality uh, movement uh, from, for church. <coughs> So, but what we haven't done yet is we haven't finished the cannabis issue. This is something that I've worked about 30 hours a week on. It takes almost all my time. Uh, we have, in my view, turned the tide uh, of the total outlaw uh, cannabis growers we had, and we're starting to bring cannabis growers into the fold and following the rules and regulations. Um, also, we have a general plan that we are now almost funded. I, that was kind of one promise I made is we would work everything we could get a general plan going, uh, which allows each individual community to decide what you want your community to look like and not uh, what some other community tells you. So we are promised that that will be put out to um, bid uh, this fall and then we will start that general plan uh, process. I see I've got the yellow thing. I could be up here for hours, but thank you very much. Supervisor. Then I went up to Sacramento where I worked in headquarters, promoted to lieutenant, had the opportunity to go to San Jose and Oakland before going back to Sacramento where I ran a couple of programs there such as the grants unit for the department as well as uh, California Motorcycle Safety Program. And I had an opportunity to work at the state capitol. Um, such programs like the uh, uh, Governor's Policy Council on Alcohol and Drug Abuse and the Criminal Justice and Planning Commission. I had the opportunity in 1998 to move to Weaverville, where I was selected as the area commander for the Highway Patrol office here. And he did that, uh, I was here for about 10 years before going to uh, Redding, where I took on the administrative functions of our northern division, which handled 17 area commands from just north of Sacramento to the Oregon border. There I performed all types of administrative functions like public information, auditing, uh, peace officer bill of rights training, civil liabilities, uh, grants, budgeting, um, inventory audits, um, and uh, I also had an opportunity to do internal investigations. Uh, from there, I promoted a captain, went to Hollister Gilroy, where I finished up my career in a command where I had 55 employees that I was responsible for down there. We had all of San Benito County and part of uh, Santa Clara County that I was responsible for. But when I retired, I uh, got everything done around the house, and then I figured <laughs> I still have more to give to the people of California. So I applied for and was selected as a deputy marshal for the courthouse. And I've been doing that for the last five years. Some of the things I want to do as a sheriff is I want to work as hard as I can, utilizing everything that I've learned 
not only from grants, but also funding sources outside of the state to bring more deputies onto the department, especially more uh, resident deputies that are sorely needed all over the county. I want to uh, enforce all cannabis-related ordinances, as well as establishing a missing persons cold case unit within the department. We'll be on a part-time basis, but at least get somebody in there that's starting to look at some of these cases and trying to figure out if we can solve them. I want to expand the active shooter program. We've got a great program going on now. I want to expand that even further. Uh, collaborate with schools. I want a school resource officer back in our schools again, partnered up with a juvenile probation officer where they go around to the schools and address student issues as well as uh, you know, some uh, behavioral issues and uh, drug related issues. And I want to ensure that the new jail project moves forward as quickly as possible. We sorely need that. But that's just uh, a little bit of what I want to do and why I'm running. Thank you. Mark Potts. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mark Potts. I'm running for sheriff. Um, a little history. Uh, I've been in public service since uh, 1975 when I joined the Marine Corps. Completed a 23-year uh, military career in 1998, uh, and shortly thereafter started with the sheriff's office here. And I've been in that capacity now for just about 20 years. Um, <clears throat> I've been through several administrations and even more elections, and I tend to hear the same thing every election cycle of, of what's going to uh, the oncoming person's going to do, and, and it seems to never come to fruition. So I'm trying to choose a different path and do things differently because what has been tried, and, and it appears my opponents want to continue to try the same thing over and over and over again, I want to try something different. Um, <clears throat> I guess I've been in the uh, department as a, right now, patrol, patrol deputy. I've worked in jail division, I've worked in uh, narcotics division. And, uh, I'm running basically, there's a lot of things that need to be done, but I'm running, running basically my main major three uh, platform uh, are, are threefold, and, and they are <coughs> restore the for, your property rights pursuant to the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution, and as I just said, uh, the budgeting, re the, the way we're budgeted at the sheriff uh, through a different means than we have historically that has not worked. And thirdly, to shore up our woeful deficiency in manpower, and particularly out in the outlying areas uh, where they seldom see a deputy, uh, through a, with a posse. I've been forming a posse that's over 400 strong now to help shore up some of those deficiencies and get some people out in the areas to help those people that are being overrun by hooligans that uh, seem to run at will without uh, any peril. So those are my basic three uh, components. So like I say, there are other things that need, need to be done, but that's my major three platform. And uh, we look forward to your questions. Our next candidate for sheriff is uh, Ron Hanover. Ron? Hello, everybody. I'm Ron Hanover. Um, I was born here in Trinity County 59 years ago, I'm fourth generation from this county. My wife, Audrey, is also raised in our county. Our grandchildren and their children are all raised here. Um, I've worked in our sawmills. I've worked in, our, in logging. I've worked in other businesses around the county. Uh, I have, you know, I just really love this county, and I love the people in our county, and i got a lot vested here. Uh, I've been working for the Trinity County Sheriff's Office for the past 21 years. Uh, I started out working in a jail moved up. Uh, I've been currently I'm corporal administering the code enforcement, marijuana code, code enforcement uh, program for the last five years. Uh, let's see, I got, was in the, eight, uh, in the United States Coast Guard for eight years, uh, 15 years on patrol, 14 of those years as a field training officer. I'm SWAT trained, I'm sniper trained, I'm trained in drug and endangered children, I'm active shooter trained, uh, I've been to supervisory management training, I'm investigator trained, I've got my uh, advanced certificate from post. 
Uh, some of my plan points uh, to build lasting partnerships with uh, our, our citizenry, work with community organizations to proactively address growing concerns, address employee retention and recruitment, obtain funding for additional deputies, uh, address the rising concerns for school safety, improves response time to calls for service, hold deputies accountable to community concerns, protect our watersheds from harmful pesticides, establish an environment of community involvement, address homelessness and related issues, and help build the Sheriff's Auxiliary to be an extension of the Sheriff's Office. <clears throat> As your Sheriff, it is my desire to be a Sheriff for the people, a proactive Sheriff. Sheriff that is willing to continue working in the field, a sheriff that will lead from the front lines, a sheriff that will stay in touch with the community and will remain ever vigilant in staying an active part of each community. As sheriff, I will protect and defend our Second Amendment rights. I will continue to work with local and state agencies to combat our environmental issues. I'm not. personal note on the next group, uh, when you look at book one over in Humboldt County, the county records, you notice my great grandfather's name on it. He was the first county recorder for Trinity County. And then Trinity County left. Uh, the first candidate for uh, clerk recorder assessor is uh, Lisa Wright. to the Alliance Club for putting on, the, on this event tonight. I'm Lisa Wright, and I'm here to ask you to make the right choice this election. You've lived for nearly a decade under Board of Supervisor appointed clerk recorder assessors, I'm going to call them CRAs, and I think it's time for you to choose someone in an election. This will get some facts about the current state of the office. We have a 2016 grand jury report that was based on facts. I was on the grand jury in 2010, so I know how seriously these people take their job. And they found several violations of election code, which is very concerning. Also, there was a 2014 Board of Equalization report on the assessment practices that found some significant problems. We haven't seen any public reports of how that was addressed. In 2017, the BOE came back and they did a sampling to see if we were within the acceptable ranges of assessments, uh, which we were, but they did not address those problems. And I'm hoping that there's something in public writing, but I haven't found anything. So that would be one thing I would want to take a close look at. But now you say, who is Lisa Wright? You know, maybe you've seen me around, maybe you haven't. Well, let me take you back to the third grade library day with me, where I was searching out the next biography on the American president. I just couldn't get enough. By the time I was in the sixth grade, I thought I'd become the president. But by the time I was in high school, I was walking door to door on cold November election days, offering people uh, rides to the polls. I felt so strongly about democracy. I went on to earn a bachelor's degree in political science and French. I have a master's degree in public administration, um, after which I was selected as one of 200 into the presidential management program uh, during the Bush, uh, Reagan and into Bush administrations. And there I worked for the U.S. Department of Justice, the Executive Office of U.S. Trustees, to help roll out a pilot program that was self-funded with investment authority. So some pretty exciting times. I also received specialized training in that role from the Federal Law Enforcement Training uh, Academy in white collar crime and fraud investigation, which has been really helpful in my investigation here. I also served as a controller of a college and executive director of a, a chamber of commerce, as well as an executive director of economic development, for which I have still have a strong passion and what has really led me to get more involved in the community. And that's how do we expand our tax base instead of relying on the backs of fixed income individuals and increasing their assessed valuations. I feel that's very important and hopefully hear some more of that from our board of supervisors. I went on to private sector success. I spent over 15 years in the Oracle software world. You can find out more about me there on LinkedIn, my profile. And all I've been in the workforce for over 30 years, so I have a breadth of experience and knowledge. But my heart really remains in community. I decided to step out and step away from my quiet, private um, life here in, in Lewiston and give you a choice in this election because I really feel that you deserve better. I'm committed to protecting your rights, like your right to free and fair elections, and your right to own private property with equitable taxation. 
I am running to serve you as an honest, fair, transparent office holder who remembers how much blood has been shed and continues to be shed to be sure that your rights are preserved and not taken. Thank you. The next candidate for clerk recorder, Shanna White. Uh, hi, I'm Shanna White. I'm your current county clerk recorder assessor. I'd like to thank the Lewis and Lions Club for hosting this event tonight and all of you for taking the time to come out and get to know your candidates um, and voting for the candidate you feel will do the best job for you and your community. A little bit about myself. I moved to Trinity County in 1982, married my husband Greg over 30 years ago, and we are the su successful business owners of white construction and roofing. We're also the proud parents of two beautiful daughters who were born and raised in Trinity County. Uh, my career with Trinity County began 23 years ago in the clerk recorder's office, I'm sorry, in the auditor controller's office as an account clerk one. And through hard work and dedication, I am now the county clerk recorder assessor. I currently hold a certified property tax appraiser certificate, and I'm only three courses away from getting my advanced certificate. I also hold a certificate in recordable document examiner, and I've completed four courses towards my California Professional Elections Administration credential. Uh, I continue to attend annual trainings to keep up to date on um, any changes in laws and procedures. Uh, since my appointment, I've done everything possible to protect the confidentiality of the voters. Um, and I've run elections honestly, honestly, with integrity and following codes. Um, contrary to what's been said about me, I do follow federal, state, and local codes, and I don't make them up. Um, a few accomplishments I've had. I've increased the hours uh, uh, open to the public from 3 to 6. I've implemented the ability to examine records electronically so you don't have to grab those big books off the shelves and, and look through to find uh, research. Uh, with the assistance of the Treasurer Tax Collector, we can now accept payments via credit card. A little bit about my team. I'm very proud of them and the customer service they provide. Uh, they're hardworking, knowledgeable individuals that make every attempt to ensure customers' needs are met before they leave the office. Um, so I think I have plenty of time, so I'm going to throw something from my closing because of what was said. In, um, there, there was a grand jury report done in 2016. Uh, the, resu the result was uh, resulted in findings and recommendations from the grand jury. I wrote a response to those findings, as did the Board of Supervisors, as required. Um, I do want to add that when I was interviewed, there were two of the members on the grand jury that are part of the group that is holding up um, the Mountain Valley Joint Unified School District from selling their bond and filing fictitious lawsuits for other reasons. Uh, so I ask that you please read the report, read the responses, ask questions before forming an opinion on that grand jury report. Um, it's also said that assessments are too high and abnormal. Oh, okay, so I'm running out of time. So, I want to say in closing, I've dedicated the past 23 years to Trinity County. The last eight, most importantly, here in the clerk recorder assessor's office. Um, my experience has provided the knowledge and understanding that ensures these departments run efficiently and effectively. Although I may not be the best public speaker, I'm the best one for the job. <laughs>
that there are people who will fight for us and that we can fight for ourselves. I look forward to your questions. Thank you. At this time, we're going to break. Uh, there is a table to talk to by the door, or if you want to ask questions, you can write down your questions. But before we do that, I'd like to give all the candidates a hand.